silver in the Qing dynasty. Since the tax reform in China during the Ming dynasty, many taxes needed to be paid in China in silver. When the Qing dynasty defeated the Ming, the new regime also took taxes in silver. But China did not mine sufficient silver, and it did not officially mint silver coins. The government therefore demanded silver without controlling much silver production or any of its coinage. There were copper coins, which the Qing did mint, but those were usually in smaller denominations and used for ordinary transactions. So there was a large demand for silver in China, which continued in the Qing dynasty. But where did the silver come from? Some came from mines in Burma. There was a bit of mining in southwest China. But the integration of the Americas into world trade was very significant. The Spanish were shipping large amounts of silver from the Americas. The Spanish also conquered the Philippines and controlled Manila by around 1571. It was trade of silver through its Manila port that was an important factor in lubricating trade between the European powers and China. Silver relative to gold was worth twice as much in China as in Europe at the same time. So it made sense for traders in the Americas to ship silver to China and gold to Europe as their value could be maximized that way. So more than half of the silver that was coming to China originated from the Spanish Americas. The Spanish crown regulated silver coinage and the quality of its coins. Initially, the silver for coins had come from Peru, but by the early 1800s, that had changed to Mexico. The Carolus silver Spanish pesos, featuring the head of either Charles III or after him Charles IV, and they collectively ruled over Spain and the Spanish Americas from 1759 to 1808, those coins were particularly valued in China. The coins were well recognized, and the quality of the silver value was well understood and consistent. That provided value as a recognized sign and stored a value. Unlike other coins or bullion, it didn't need to be weighed or assessed for its value each time it changed hands. A knowledgeable trader could simply recognize the face on the coin and know its value. That was true even in the interior of China. Some have argued that the Corollas coin acted like the US dollar does today in countries that don't have reliable currency, such as Zimbabwe or Argentina. The Corolla silver peso was in demand throughout China and there's evidence that some long-term Chinese contracts even insisted on future payment in Carolus coins, maybe as a hedge against inflation. The issue of inflation came up in the Qing dynasty, especially in the 1800s, because in 1808, Napoleonic France invaded Spain, and control over its colonies was impacted. The process was gradual. Over the next two decades, many former Spanish colonies, like Peru and Mexico, gained independence. During the independence struggle and after, various regimes issued coins of different looks and qualities. Now, in the first years after 1808, this didn't cause much trouble in China, as there were still plenty of Corollas coins circulating. There were even some more minted in the Americas in the early years, as that is what the coinage facilities were used to producing. But as supply was disrupted and less reliable coins began circulating, Corollas coins became scarcer. In part because no more were coined, but also because of their demand in China so their value increased. They actually became worth more than their weight in silver. They were well known, they were reliable for their silver content, and they were preferred over other coins. It then became profitable for foreign traders to bring Carolus coins to China and to trade them for silver ingots. The coins were preferred in China over their equivalent in silver bars or other coins, which had to be weighed each time and assessed before they could change hands. Foreign traders took uncoined silver of a higher value for those particular silver coins that were in demand in China. A foreign trader could make money trading silver for silver, as long as it was Corollas coins going to China in exchange for higher value pure silver in its rawer forms like ingots or irregular coins coming out. Now to be clear, foreign traders weren't only trading silver. Tea and silk from China were in big demand elsewhere. And as we will see, opium, along with Corollas coins, was in demand in Qing Dynasty China. But the economic disturbance caused in China by the interruption of Corollas coins was an influence that contributed both to the Opium War and the Taiping Rebellion. This is just set in the scene. The Qing economy was suffering an external monetary shock, and it did not control its own coinage. China depended on certain foreign coins. When the supply of those coins dried up, their value increased relative to other goods, including copper coins used for daily purchases and compared to food. With the shortage of reliable silver coins and the trading of them for increased amounts of pure silver, which left the country, there was a reduction in overall silver in China. There was an increase in the relative cost of other items like copper coins and rice. This seems to have created both a recession or depression and inflation where the amount of rice or copper coins it took to buy a silver coin increased dramatically, 
unrest and mass protests were recorded specifically based on the rising cost of silver. So this is an underlying economic and political situation in Qing Dynasty China around the 1830s. Soon we'll see what trouble this brought. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Chinese Revolution.